3A2 Concrete Beam Laboratory. In this laboratory session, we will observe and measure the response of a reinforced concrete beam to loading under both surface stability and ultimate limit states. The beam is simply supported and will be subjected to a single point load at mid-span. The dimensions of the beam are as follows. The beams used for this experiment have been manufactured in the Departmental Materials Laboratory. A number of different types of beam have been produced using different reinforcement configurations. The exact configuration of your beam, in terms of reinforcement and cover, will be given during your lab session. The compressive strength of the concrete will also be provided. This has been determined by way of testing a cube made from the same batch of concrete as your beam. For the beam used in this demonstration, the details are as follows. The beam will be gradually loaded in increments of 5 kN via the hydraulic test rig until failure occurs. The response of the beam in terms of displacement and strain will be measured and recorded with the System 5000 data acquisition system. Displacement at mid-span will be measured using a Linear Variable Displacement Transducer, or LVDT, whilst force will be measured using a load cell. Both of these instruments are built into the actuator. Strain will be measured at four locations using bonded resistive strain gauges. All of the gauges are located at mid-span and are equally spaced with respect to depth. As the beam is loaded and begins to bend, fibres above the neutral axis will be subjected to compression. Compression is indicated by negative values of strain. Conversely, fibres below the neutral axis will be subjected to tension. This will be indicated by positive values of strain. Before starting the test, the strain gauges, force transducer and displacement transducer values must be zeroed using the software. The loading ram is then brought down until it makes contact with the specimen. The force is applied in increments of approximately 5 kN. We will pause at each increment to measure the response of the beam. As expected, strain gauges above the neutral axis, i.e. gauges 1 and 2, read negative values of strain, illustrating compression. Gauges 3 and 4 conversely display positive values, illustrating tension. However, you will also notice that the strain gauges on concrete are typically not as reliable as those that are placed on steel. This is because, despite surface preparation, Concrete often has a dusty exterior that can be difficult to bond to. It can also crack locally and result in strain gauges becoming damaged or isolated on pockets of concrete that are not representative of the structure as a whole. At this stage of the experiment, the relationship between force and displacement is linear and the beam is undergoing elastic deformation. Similarly, the strain gauge readings are increasing linearly. In your lectures, you will have learned that concrete performs poorly in tension. As the beam continues to bend and stresses in the structure continue to increase, cracks will develop in the region subjected to the highest tensile stresses. This will be at or close to mid-span. Additional cracks will then develop at other locations as the tensile stresses there also begin to exceed the capacity of the concrete. This will first occur near to mid-span whilst litter cracks will develop further from the central region. Tension cracks will gradually widen 
as the beam bends further and the concrete and steel at the bottom of the beam stretches in tension. They will also increase in depth as strain values further from the bottom also exceed the capacity of the concrete. Please note the location and order of formation of the tension cracks on the beam. You will need this information for part 2 of your report. The number displayed on screen next to the crack indicates the order of formation. With this particular beam, we will observe the shear failure takes place. A crack opens up between the support and the loading ramp, partially following the length of the reinforcing bar. This is a force control test. As such, the actuator attempts to apply the next force increment, but due to the compromised condition of the concrete, the beam fails suddenly as the crack widens. The observed shear failure in this experiment is due to the lack of shear reinforcement in the beam. The use of shear links, also known as stirrups within the structure, would have increased the shear capacity and led to failure in flexure. The handout for this lab, as well as sample data from this experiment, may be found via either of the links on your screen. Please use the data to complete the lab report. The report for this lab is split into two parts, serviceability and ultimate loading. Please use the material covered in lectures to determine the ceiling of serviceability limit state for this particular beam. Part 1. Serviceability loading. Draw a figure of the beam showing the dimensions and reinforcement details. Present the experimental data obtained in tabular form. Plot the load versus central deflection curve for the loading process and compare the experimental and theoretical deflections. Calculate using both gross and crack second moment of area and compare the two. Draw vertical strain and hence stress profiles at mid-span of the beam using a number of different force increments. Compare the applied moment with the internal moment of resistance developed at one particular force value. Determine whether the beam is under reinforced, over reinforced or of balanced design. Part 2. Ultimate loading. Draw a figure of the crack patterns formed near midspan and at the beam supports. Compare the neutral axis depth obtained from the experimental observation with the theoretical calculations. Compare the theoretical moment capacity with the failure ultimate moment. The following data and equations, which are also included in the handout, may help you in completing your report. Thank you for watching this video, and best of luck in submitting your report.